Hello math learners! We have already discussed the first two operations about radicals, the addition and subtraction of radicals. Today, we're going to discuss the third operation and that is all about the multiplication of radicals. In this video, you will know the step-by-step -step techniques and procedures on how to properly multiply radical expressions as well as obtain their answers in its simplest form. But before anything else, hit that subscribe button and notification bell for you to be updated of these cool clear math videos just like this. Hello math learners! Welcome to another session here in Math Learning with Sir Ash. This is still your free access math teacher Ash and today we're going to discuss the most essential learning competency based lesson for quarter 2 of the grade 9 mathematics which is all about multiplying radicals or multiplying radical expressions. The first question is, how do we multiply radical expressions? In multiplying radical expressions, we will be applying what we have learned in the law of exponents as well as in the law of radicals. As you know, in our channel, we have already discussed the law of exponents as well as the law of radicals. The next is that, in multiplying radicals, you will be multiplying depending on the situation. In which, if you will be multiplying terms or factors that has only one term, then what you can do is you can multiply them directly. But remember, my dear math learners, you need to check first the index of your radical expressions so that you can apply them directly. However, if you are multiplying more terms, then you will be applying the distributive property. Okay, now let's get into our examples so that you can have a concrete idea on how to do this. Okay, let's consider the first example. We have square root of 12x times the square root of 8xy. Both radical expressions are in the square root, so meaning the index is both 2. So if that is the case, then you can multiply them directly. So the square root of 12 times square root of 8, that will give you square root of 96 x times x will be x squared and then since there is a y in the other side you just copy the y now as you can see we have applied our law of radicals as well as our law of exponents okay now the question is is this our final answer my dear math learners if you can still simplify your answer you need to simplify it though 96 is not a perfect square However, you can still factor it into smaller pieces or smaller factors in which one factor is a perfect square. Let's try it. What are the factors of 96? So if we factor 96, let's say we start with 4. So is this divisible by 4? Yes, that is. That is square root of 4. And then if you divide this by 4, that will be square root of 24. However, 24 can still be broken down. So therefore, we will broke down our 24 and that will become 4 and 6. Now since 6 can still be broken down, its factor is not perfect square. Okay, now let's go to our variables. We have square root of x squared and we have the square root of y. Now as you can see, I have broken down my radicands into smaller bits so that I can simplify them. The square root of 4 is 2. The square root of 4 is still 2 so that will be multiplied with each other. The square root of 6 is still the square root of 6. The square root of x squared is x. And the square root of y is still the square root of y. So now I will multiply the radicands and the irrational expressions. So 2 times 2 times x, that will give me 4x. Square root of 6 times square root of y, that will give me square root of 6y. And this will be your final answer. Easy, right? Now let us go to our... Second example, we have here 5x cube root of 9x squared y times 2y squared cube root of 15x squared y squared. As you can see, though each are one term expression, it has a coefficient and a radical expression. So how do you multiply this kind of terms? If this is the case, then what you can do is you just multiply the coefficients and then you multiply the radical expressions. So for the coefficients, 5x times 2y squared that will give you 10xy squared. Now for the radical expressions, 
we have cube root and cube root so we can multiply them directly okay so that is cube root so 9 times 15 that will give us um, 135 okay and then x squared times x squared that will give us x to the fourth y times y squared that will give us y cubed okay so now we have 10x y squared cube root of 135 x to the fourth y cubed the question is is this our final answer my dear math learners let's try to consider our values here we have an exponent in the radicand that is bigger than our index so technically we need to simplify this even more and our 135 is not a perfect cube but it can be broken down into smaller factors so what are the factors of 135 where one factor is a perfect cube okay let's start now the first perfect cube would be 8 is this divisible by 8 it's not the second is 27 okay so this is divisible by 27 so what we can do now is we copy first our coefficient that is 10 x y squared and then we broke down our 135 that is cube root of 27 and cube root of 5 because 27 times 5 is 135 now we broke down our x to the fourth and that will be cube root of x cube and the cube root of x because x cube and x is equal to x to the fourth okay and then we have y cube we have the cube root of y cube okay so let us try to simplify this one so we'll just copy our coefficient that is 10 x y squared okay and then our first radicand that is 27 so that is a perfect cube so the answer is 3 and then the cube root of 5 so let's just copy the cube root of 5. The cube root of x cubed is x. The cube root of x is still the cube root of x. And we have the cube root of y cubed and that is y. So my dear math learners, let us try to simplify this one. These are our coefficients now. 10xy squared. We have a 3 here. We, ha we have an x here and then we have a y here. So 10 times 3, that will give us 30 x times x that will give us x squared y squared times y that is y cubed then for our cube root we have 5 and x so that is 5x and this will be your final answer easy right so now let us go to our third example okay math learners we are now to our third example we have 6x the fifth root of 16 x to the seventh y to the ninth power times 4xy fifth root of 18x to the fourth y to the fourth so how do we multiply this okay first thing you should do is you multiply the coefficients so 6x times 4xy that will give you 24x squared y okay so now we will be trying to multiply our Radicands. Now, my dear math learners, there are other ways also to multiply, especially if you have a bigger index for your radical expression. You can do a simplified version of the radicands before multiplying it to another set of radicands. Okay, how do we do that? So, since this is fifth root, 16 can be broken down into smaller pieces and it is divisible by 2, right? So, 2 times 2, 4 times 2, 8 times 2, 16. Okay, so we have the fifth root of 2 to the fourth and then we have x to the power of 7 so that could be fifth root of x to the 5 and the fifth root of x squared okay and then we have y to the 9 that could be the fifth root of y5 and the fifth root of y to the fourth okay so i've broken this down first okay let's go to 18 now 18 basically if you broke down 18 you can have the fifth root of 2 and the fifth root of 3 squared because 3 times 3 is 9 9 times 2 is 18 okay so i just broken down the factors of 18 okay and then we have x to the fourth so that is the fifth root of x to the fourth and we have the fifth root of y to the fourth okay so by simplifying my dear math learners i could have 
24x squared y. And then now, I will check which among these factors is a perfect power of 5. Okay. So this is not because that is only 2 to the 4th. This is the 1. So I will multiply that by its 5th truth. So this is already checked. However, this one is not a perfect power of 5. Now this is another perfect power of 5. So that is y. And check here. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet, and not yet. Okay, so I have now my simplified perfect powers of 5. Okay, how about here? I will now be multiplying the powers of 2. Okay, so by multiplying the powers of 2, I will have the 5th root of 2 to the 5th. Okay, because 2 to the 4th times 2 will become 2 to the 5th. And then, I also have a number here, so that is 5th root of 3 squared. Okay, and then... I have here x. I also have here x. Okay, so that will give me x to the 6. So if I broke down to the powers of 5 for x to the 6, that will give me the 5th root of x to the 5 and the 5th root of x. Okay, and then for my y, I have y4 here. I have another y to the 4th here. So that will give me y to the 8. And if I broke down y to the 8, that will give me the fifth root of y to the fifth and the fifth root of y cubed. Okay, so another simplification, my dear math learners. So that will be, if I simplify this one, this will give me 24x cubed y squared. Okay, and then for my radical expressions, we have a perfect power of 5 here, that is 2. Here, that is not. So let's just copy this one. This one is a perfect power this one is not this one is a perfect power power and this one is not okay p power of y cubed okay so now i have 24 x cubed y squared times 2 times x times y so my final answer will give me 24 times 2 that is 48 x cubed x that will x to the that will give me x to the fourth. y squared, y, that will give me y cubed. And for my radical expression, that will be the fifth root of 3 squared, that is 9, x, y cubed. And this will be my final answer. Okay? Challenging, right? But I know, my dear math learners, with constant practice, you can have a concrete idea on how to apply them okay now let us go to our fourth example okay math learners for our fourth example we have 6xz square root of 75x cubed yz squared times 4yz square root of 12x squared y cubed z to the 5 okay so we have our coefficients 6 times 4 that will give us 24 x okay y and two z's, that will give us z squared. Okay. Now for our radical expressions, we have both a square root. So 75 is basically 25 and 3, right? So that is 25. You can also write this one, okay, and 3. We have 12. If we broke it down, we have 4 and 3. Okay. So that gives us 9. Okay. And then... For our x, we have x to the 5, so that is x squared, x squared, and x. For our y, we have y and y cubed, that will become y to the 4th, so that can be y squared and y squared. I am already getting the factors of this one, so that it will be easy, my dear math learners. z squared and z to the 5th power, that will become z to the power of 7. So that will give me z squared times z squared times z squared times z. Okay. So these are now my factors. Okay, so I have my coefficient here, 24xyz squared. 25 is a perfect square, so the square root of 25 is 5. 4 is a perfect square, the square root is 2. 3 and 3 here will become 9. 9 is a perfect square and the square root of 9 is... 3, alright. x squared is a perfect square. 
x squared is a perfect square. The square root of that one is x in x. However, the square root of x here is still the square root of x. Here we have a perfect square, a perfect square, a perfect square for z, z squared, a perfect square for z squared, and a perfect square for z squared. However, let's just copy the square root of z because z is not a perfect square. Okay, so now I have here 24 times 5 times 2 times 3. So 5 times 2 is 10. Okay, so 3 times 24 that will give us that will give us 72 72 times 10 that will give us 720 all right our x 1 2 3 okay so we have x cubed our y 1 2 3 so that will become y cubed our z we have already two here 2 3 4 5 okay so we have z to the fifth power and for our radical expression we have x z and this will be your final answer easy right so this is how you multiply radical expressions with only one term okay so my dear math learners it is up to you how to simplify them as long as your final answer will not be needing any simplification and that will be your final answer okay so now my dear math learners let us go if ever we will encounter Two terms okay 